What if I told you the three hours you spent on your phone yesterday actually took longer than the entire month of February? I know that sounds impossible, but neuroscience just discovered why your brain processes phone time differently than real time. Before that, here's something to try right now. Check your screen time from yesterday. Look at that number. Now try to remember anything specific you saw on your smartphone during those hours. Anything at all. Strange, isn't it? Those hours feel like they never happened, like they exist in some kind of void where time moves differently than normal reality. For years, scientists thought they understood how humans process time. The old model was simple. When you're engaged in something interesting, time flies. When you're bored, time drags. That's why everyone assumed phone time felt fast, because it's entertaining. But the math wasn't mathing. You see, researchers at Stanford noticed a pattern. People weren't just losing track of time on phones. They were experiencing time fundamentally differently than any other activity in human history. Different from watching TV, different from reading books, different even from playing video games. Let me show you what these researchers found because it changes everything we thought we knew about attention and time. Your brain creates your sense of time by stringing together moments of focused attention like beads on a necklace. Each clear moment of experience becomes a distinct memory that your brain uses to measure time passing. This system evolved over millions of years when humans lived in a much simpler world. Our ancestors needed to remember where they found food, which plants were poisonous, and how to get back to shelter, so our brains got really good at one thing, creating clear, distinct memories of focused experiences. But phones have created something entirely new, micro-attention. Instead of focusing for minutes or hours, your brain is now switching attention every few seconds. Every notification, every scroll, every new image, every like, every comment, each one fragments your attention into smaller and smaller pieces. MIT neuroscientists recently discovered something fascinating. It takes your brain about 23 seconds to fully engage with any new piece of information, but the average person switches attention on their phone every six to eight seconds. This means your brain never gets to complete its processing cycle. It's like trying to take a photo while constantly shaking the camera. This creates what scientists call temporal fragmentation. Think of it like this. Normal memories are like full photographs, clear, distinct, easy to remember. But phone time creates thousands of partial exposures that never fully develop into real memories. Want to see this in action? Try another quick experiment. Think about your last vacation. You can probably remember specific conversations, what you ate, how things felt, clear moments in time. Now try to remember what you looked at during your last scrolling session. Even though it might have been hours, it's like trying to remember a dream. Here's where it gets really interesting. Your brain has two main ways of processing experience. Active processing creates clear memories, builds actual neural pathways, and makes time feel real. Passive processing creates hazy or no memories, doesn't build lasting pathways, and makes time feel phantom. This is where phones have created something unprecedented. They've invented a third state, fragmented processing, where your brain is constantly starting but never finishing its natural memory creation cycle. This explains something that's happening across society. People in their 20s and 30s are experiencing what used to only happen to the elderly. Time seems to speed up exponentially each year. Think about kids born after 2010. They're the first humans in history growing up with fragmented attention as their default state. Their brains are literally developing differently because they're processing time differently than any generation before them. We're seeing this everywhere. Rising ADHD diagnoses, increasing anxiety, memory issues in young people, difficulty with sustained focus, and time perception disorders, all tracking perfectly with smartphone adoption rates. But wait, there's always good news at Wobbleverse. Your brain hasn't lost the ability to process time normally. The machinery is still there, it's just being overwhelmed by fragmentation. Think of it like trying to have a conversation while someone interrupts you every six seconds. Eventually, you stop trying to form complete thoughts. This isn't just about wasted time, it's about lost experience. Those phantom hours aren't just missing from your schedule, they're missing from your life. Your brain never properly encoded them, so they might as well have never happened. But once you understand this mechanism, you can actually hack it. 
not by using your phone less, but by using it completely differently. Instead of fragmenting your attention, create what neuroscientists call temporal bookends. These are clear start and stop points that let your brain complete its natural processing cycle. For example, choose three specific videos to watch, read exactly five posts, spend a defined 15 minutes on messages. When you start doing this, something remarkable happens. Not only does time start feeling normal again, but your days begin feeling richer, fuller, more memorable, more like they did when you were younger. Imagine looking back on your week and actually remembering what happened. Instead of losing entire days to the digital void, you're fully present for your own life. This isn't just about personal time management, it's about reclaiming your actual lived experience. Because time isn't just passing, it's being experienced. Or in the case of phone time, not being experienced at all. Your phone isn't just consuming hours, it's fundamentally altering how you process reality. But now that you understand the mechanism, you can take back control, not just of your schedule, but of time itself. If this changed how you think about time, share it with someone whose life might be slipping away six seconds at a time. Sometimes understanding the why is the first step to changing what. Subscribe for more insights like this, and let me know if you truly remember what you consumed on the internet yesterday. Tell me, I read all the comments.